Okay. Yeah. Next talk is Hosho Katsuro, who's going to tell us about um, algebraic construction for quantum many bodies cars. Yeah. Thanks, Chairman. And uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the organizers for inviting me to this really wonderful conference. And but I have to admit that I'm not really a person doing anything like a crazy uh, periodically driven or quasi periodically driven either. So, but uh, so sorry for that. But uh, I'm going to at least show you something uh, periodically oscillating in the middle of my talk. So maybe you can forgive me. <laughs> So anyway, so and this work was done in collaboration with many people, including uh, my former students and my, my current PhD student. And but uh, because the time is limited, so uh, let me focus on some of the papers. And the first one is uh, was done by uh, with Naoyuki Shibata, he's here, and uh, Nobuyuki Ashoka. And the second one was done with uh, Anada and uh, Miao. And the last one was actually the latest, my latest paper, which was posted on archive yesterday. So maybe some of you, some of you might, might have seen it. Anyway, uh, this is a nice collaboration with uh, uh, Masaya Kunimi, he's here, and actually Tomita-san is an experimentalist. All right, so, okay, so here's the plan of my talk. So in the first part, I'm gonna uh, talk about some brief introduction and motivation. And I'm going to explain what the uh, ETH is. And then I'm uh, introduce several uh, classes of systems in which the ETH is violated. Then I will uh, explain to you some recent exper experiment about a uh, readable atom chain uh, whose uh, effective model is described by PXP model. And then I will overview some uh, recent results for uh, quantum many body scars. And in the second part, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, some class of scarred models constructed by using uh, Onsager algebra. And then uh, in the third part, I will uh, introduce some other uh, classes of models. All right. Okay, so let me start with the ETH. And I'm sure uh, most of you are uh, pretty much familiar with the ETH summarization and so on. But uh, to just make sure that everybody's on the same page. So let me start with some basic definitions. And here is our setup. And H is our Hamiltonian uh, descri describing the system. And in A and Ket is a normalized energy eigenstate. And by O, I mean some macroscopic observable. And row MC is a, a micro canonical ensemble. And our uh, our energy share is a linear span of this uh, E and K, uh, whose energy uh, energies range from, you know, this range, I mean, from E minus delta E to E. And okay, so, so what is a thermal state? So a state E and K is said to be thermal if the expectation value of O in this state is the same as, you know, it's micro canonical average over these states. And now, okay, so the strong ETH, strong version of the eigenstate summarization hypothesis states that all of these E and K in the energy shell are thermal. And this is believed to be true for a large class of non-integrable systems. And the, the concept was perhaps first introduced by von Neumann, uh, but uh, it was rediscovered again and again in the literature by many people. And, and, and to date, there are many, you know, experimental and numerical uh, results supporting this, you know, strong ETH for non-integrable systems. And, and there is a weaker version of the statement. So somehow it is okay. Can we go? Yeah, sorry. So somehow the bottom is cut, but anyway, so. The weaker, weaker version of the ETH states that almost all uh, these energy states are uh, thermal. And this was proved, proved under certain condition uh, like a translational symmetry and uh, look, and if the Hamiltonian is only made up of local interactions, then uh, it was proved by uh, several people. Uh, there's uh, several classes of exceptions in which uh, the strong version of the ETH uh, doesn't really hold. 
And famous examples are integrable systems uh, in which you have many conserved charges that constrain you know, their dynamics. Uh, and in this case, uh, the strong version doesn't hold, but the weak version uh, holds. And, and the other example is you know, many body localized systems uh, in which both strong and weak ETH do not hold. And, and here is um, some you know, example of an integrable system, which is S equal one half Heisenberg chain. And, and this is an example of an MBL system in which you have a, a, you know, this a random magnetic field in addition to the Heisenberg interaction. And, and recently people found the third class of models uh, in which you have a, a Hilbert space fragmentation, meaning that your Hilbert space splits into exponentially many sectors uh, with increasing the system size. And in this case, sometimes weak ETH holds, but sometimes it doesn't. And, but today I'm gonna entirely focus on the uh, fourth class, uh, which is the quantum many body squared systems. In this case, uh, the strong ETH doesn't hold, but the weak ETH hold. And in these class of systems, uh, they are non-integrable but uh, they have scarred states which do not summarize for an anomalously long time. And this is just a cartoon picture of a scar state, which I took from this, you know, uh, blog article written by Marcus Wu. And, and you know, uh, yeah, let me just go back a little bit. And, and this popsicle, you know, once melts, but then defreezes, and then melts and defreezes again and again. So. Uh, periodically, so it's a very weird state, right? So, and uh, what what this magazine, uh, what what this blog article is saying is, you know, a scar state is uh, such a weird uh, state. And one thing I learned from this blog article was, in the eighties, people were interested in one body scars, and and this is one example of a one body scar system. Uh, called the Bunimovich Stadium. It's a square capped by two uh, semicircles. And classically, it's a non-integrable system. So if you just you know, solve the Schrodinger equation in this Bunimovich Stadium, then most of, most of your eigenstates are just chaotic. They don't show any nice pattern, but uh, some of the eigenstates have some nice regular pattern like this. And this is one example of you know, one body scar system. But you know, we are uh, many body physicists, we are more interested in many body systems, right? And actually many body scar systems were uh, pretty much motivated by recent experiment on uh, Riedelberg atom arrays. And okay, what are Riedelberg atoms? So Riedelberg atoms are atoms in which one of the electrons in an excited is in an excited state with a very high principal quantum number. And here's one example. You see uh, uh, in this rubidium atom, uh, in the ground state, the outermost electron is in 5s orbital. But uh, if you shine a light, then you can uh, raise it to the uh, 70s orbital. And, and if you do this, then this guy becomes, you know, like big like this. and the, it, it means that the average radius uh, becomes large. And, and then, uh, okay, so here's the experimental setup. So you have a bunch of, of optical tweezers like this, and each optical tweezer traps one atom, you know, one by one, like this. And, and then uh, here, uh, at each atom, you have effectively two states, so the black dot uh, represents the excited state and the white one is the ground state. And, and this way you have a 1D array of Riedelberg atoms. And, and this is a more cartoon picture, but if you shine a, a light, then you can you know, excite this guy uh, into an excited state. Then this guy creates a interaction potential you know, via Van der Waals interaction. And if that's the case, then uh, you, know, you can really excite the neighboring atoms. So, uh, if this interaction is uh, large enough, then uh, this configuration is not allowed. So uh, this means that you never have adjacent excited states. So this is the mechanism of Riedelberg, uh, Riedelberg blockade. 
And in this setup, uh, experimental people found something interesting. And so if you start with some special initial states like a Z2 state or a Z2 prime, which is just a, you know, a translation of this state by one bloody site, then uh, uh, these guys exhibit interesting dynamics. Actually, uh, this is the experimental result compared with uh, numerical result. And the vertical axis is a uh, domain wall density, but here by domain wall, uh, they mean uh, uh, these uh, white, white or black, black, these configurations, the number of these configurations. So uh, initially you have no domain walls, but uh, then uh, if you evolve the system by this uh, Hamiltonian, uh, by this, you know, Hamiltonian of the system, then uh, you have a uh, uh, domain walls, but uh, this is oscillating this in this way. But uh, what is interesting here is this oscillation has a long period, but uh, if you start with some more uh, generic, you know, random state, then <clears throat> uh, this number just decays very rapidly. And people are wondering uh, what is the uh, mechanism of this, you know, long time oscillation in this system. Then uh, these people uh, came up with this model called the PXP model. And this is the Hamiltonian of the PXP. And here P is a projection to the ground state of each atom. And X is a resonance term between the ground state and the excited state. And you know, uh, suppose you have uh, uh, you know three neighboring atoms in the ground state. Then, if you act with this local term, then you can you know excite the middle one, like this. Then, if you act with this term again, then you can uh, you, you go back to the original configuration. And so, uh, this is just a historical remark. But uh, this PXP model is just a particular case of the model studied <coughs> uh, before. Actually, uh, Paul Fendry and uh, Christian Andrews and Gupta and others studied uh, generalization of this model in the context of optical lattice with uh, uh, tilted uh, lattice potential. And uh, Lezanofsky and me also uh, discussed uh, this model in the context of read above atom array. And but if you uh, you know tune the parameters, then you can uh, rewrite this uh, particular case. And, and then what they found in for this model, uh, the following. So here's the uh, properties of the model. And, and if you look at the level statistics of the model, then you find that it's Wigner Dyson, meaning that it's non-integrable. And, and then uh, you can also study various dynamics in this system. And, and here's the uh, fidelity dynamics in, for this model. And if you start with some special states like Z2 or Z3, uh, Z3, then you, you see you have, uh, you know, these uh, periodic revivers in time. And, and, and they also studied the energy versus entanglement entropy plot, and, and here's the result. And most states have kind of a, a volume law entanglement entropy, but you see there are some outliers, right? They have much lower entang entanglement entropy than the others. So, and so these, these are the peculiar properties of the PXP model. And, and then uh, Lin and Motorunic found an exact QMBS uh, in this system. Actually, you can write down the exact form of the uh, wave function for a particular energy of, uh, for instance, a zero energy for this case. Okay, so now let me move on to the, uh, okay. Let me overview some exact uh, models for QMBS. And so far, people found uh, several different methods to construct models with QMBS. The first one is called the embedding method, uh, found by Shiraishi and Mori. And, and okay, so here's the uh, universal form of the frustration free Hamiltonian. It's a sum of the A dagger A. And, and, and if you have a state psi naught such that it's annihilated by o, OAJ, then it's a ground state of this model. But uh, you can create a new model by you know, sandwiching CJ by A dagger and A. And if, if this C is not necessarily positive semi-definite, then uh, you can locate this psi naught in the middle of the spectrum. This is one method. And people also found uh, various different models like uh, 
uh, aka t models and you know it's a typical example of frustration free systems but you can also find some of the excited states in the exact form in this system and they can be thought of as scars and 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 people also studied Ising, Ising and the uh, XY like models. And actually, you know, this is a work, you know, conference about the periodically driven system. So I should talk a little bit about the periodically driven system. And in fact, some people uh, constructed exact Crocus scars in the driven PXP and, and similar models. And these papers were published in PRR, right? So they are not. R, 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 right? Many you guys like the R, R. <laughs> All right. So, anyway, so, and maybe I missed many important uh, papers by some of, you, uh, some of you in the audience. So, sorry for that, but uh, maybe you can find these papers in more recent reviews by, yeah, there are several reviews on the QMBS. All right. Okay. Now, now having, uh, you know, finished the introduction part. So let me talk about uh, what I'm going to talk about today. So this is just a recap of what the quantum many body scars are. So Q, yeah, quantum many body scars are non-thermal eigenstates of non-integrable Hamiltonians, and they have finite energy density, meaning that uh, they are in the middle of the spectrum. And, and, and their entanglement entropy uh, do not obey a uh, volume law. And today I'm gonna uh, ex explain to you some uh, several different construction of the models with QMBS. The first one is based on Onsaga algebra, uh, which is what Onsaga used to solve the classical 2D Ising model in this, you know, his famous paper. And the second one is based on the integrable boundary states. I'm gonna explain what it is later. But anyway, so it, it's also uh, based on some uh, method in integrable systems. And the last one is more kind of standard. So it uses some uh, kind of spectrum generating algebra. And if, if the time allows, I will also talk about some different constructions. All right, so then let me start with Onsager scars. So I'll first uh, explain the strategy to construct the model. And then I will show you some uh, uh, examples. The simplest one is the perturbed S equal one half X Y chain, but you can also construct higher spin models. All right, so, okay. So here's the strategy to construct models with scars. And our starting point is some integrable model with, you know, many conserved charges, Q1, Q2, blah, blah, blah. And these charges commute with the Hamiltonian, let's say H int. And then uh, I take a sub algebra of these conserved charges and then uh, the next thing you can do is find the reference eigenstate psi naught. It's an, just an eigenstate of H in. And, and, but uh, you know, even for integrable systems, a generic eigenstate looks quite complicated. It's a, you know, like a beta and that state. We have many you know, parameters, right? But uh, for our purpose, we need to take some simple one. So uh, like uh, just a product state or matrix product state. Then, uh, you know, you can find a tower of eigenstates generated by acting with the subalgebra on the reference state, you know, by acting with these Q1, Q2, and so on, then you can generate a tower of eigenstates. And because, you know, these Qs are commuting with the Hamiltonian, they have the same energy with the psi node, right? And then uh, the last thing you can do is uh, adding perturbation that break the integrability of H in, but do not hurt the tau of state. So you need to uh, uh, yeah, identify some desired perturbation, which doesn't hurt the, uh, these states. And this way uh, you can break the integrability and then you can think of these states as, you know, scars in the new Hamiltonian, this H. All right, so so far everything is quite abstract, but the question you might want to ask is uh, whether there's any single example in which this scenario really works, right? And, and actually this is the simple example, S equal one half X, Y chain. So here's the setup. So you have a chain and a bunch of spins like this, and uh, you have S equal one half, and the number of the sides is even, and I assume periodic boundary condition. 
and this is the Hamiltonian, and you know, this S plus minus are just the standard raising and lowering operators. And as you know, oh, this is the simplest kind of solvable model because if you uh, go to the free fermion, as you know, fermion basis, it's just a free fermion model. It was found by Leap, Schultz, Maris, and uh, Katsura. Actually, this is not me. You know, I'm not old enough to write the paper in the 60s. But anyway, this, yeah, I have nothing to do with him. But anyway, <laughs> so, and you know, uh, and because it's integrable, you have many conserved charges. And the simplest one is just the total SC, right? But you know, uh, the other charges are not very obvious in the spin basis. You know, if you go to the free fermion basis, then it's free fermion. You, you know, you can easily write down the conserved charges, but in the original spin basis, they are not very obvious. Uh, still, you can write down some, some of them uh, in a simple way. So this is one, one example. It's a bimagnum operator, Q plus minus. And you can create a neighboring uh, up state in the sea of down spins. And uh, you can check that uh, this guy commutes with the Hamiltonian. And interestingly, this is an element of Onsaga algebra. And you can find such infinitely many such. And and oh, oh sorry, it's it's cut. But uh, anyway, so our reference eigenstate is the O down state. Uh, it's a uh, obvious, obviously an eigenstate of the Hamiltonian with zero energy. And then uh, by because Q plus commutes with the Hamiltonian by acting with Q plus again and again on the O down state, you can create many eigenstates, right? But uh, actually, uh, it, it, it is more convenient to work with a coherent state. It's a um, you know, superposition of these exact eigenstates. You know, you can consider exponentiation of Q plus and then acting with the O down state and you can uh, you know, generate these states. So it's a kind of a generating function. And then, so what is interesting is this coherent state is a matrix product state with bond dimension two. And this is the explicit form. And now, uh, you know, so far I've been talking about just integrable X, Y chain, but uh, now uh, what I want to do is to identify the desired perturbations, right? And, and then uh, what you can do is uh, just, you know, uh, looking at these uh, uh, matrix product, uh, product of these matrices. And if you look at this, uh, in, you know, product of these three matrices, then you see uh, you have these four states you know, here matri matrix elements are states, right? And what you can find here is uh, we never have these two states in the, in these, you know, elements. So this means that if you consider projection to these states, then, uh, uh, you know, uh, this state is a zero energy against of these projections. And then this way you can identify Hermitian operators that annihilate this uh, matrix product state. And this is the exact uh, uh, expression. Uh, yeah, it's not that important, but what is interesting here is actually these prefactors pre can be arbitrary random because you know each guy uh, cures this psi beta, right? Okay, so this way you can you know find the desired perturbation that break the integrability of the uh, X Y chain. Now let's consider the properties of the perturbed model. So the standard diagnosis of the integrability or non-integrability is a level spacing statistics, right? Uh, and you can consider uh, uh, this here. And uh, this is a numerical result for our system size L equals 16. And here I only add a diagonal perturbation. And this is the uh, level spacing distribution in the zero magnetization sector. And clearly you see uh, the distribution follows the uh, Vigna Dyson distribution. Uh, it means that the model is non integrable. Then uh, you can also study the entanglement entropy in this system. And you know, if you think of the entanglement entropy as a thermal entropy of your subsystem, then the volume law entanglement entropy means that uh, the state is thermal. On the other hand, if it's sub, sub if it's operates sub volume law, then it's a non thermal state, right? And here's the result for the entanglement entropy for L equal 14. And you see most of the states just uh, you know, follow the volume law, but you have some outriers with much lower entanglement entropy. 
Then you can identify that these states are uh, QMBS states, which I showed you in the previous slide, like this. And you can also prove that their entanglement entropy is lower than the uh, logarithm of L. All right. Okay, so so far I've been uh, talking about just the static properties, but uh, now let me move on to the dynamics. And, and okay, so let's consider some special initial state, which is a coherent state. And because it, this co coherent state is, uh, you know, a mixture of, you know, different eigenstates, the time evolution is kind of easy to calculate. And, you know, uh, this is the, just the result. So uh, actually, if you act with the time evolution on this psi beta, then it just shifts the parameter beta by e to the minus i h t. And this means that uh, you have a revival of the wave function at a particular time tk, which is a multiple of pi over h, right? And okay, now let me show you the numerical result. So for small system sizes, and this is the fidelity between the uh, initial state and the uh, wave function at time t. And if you start with some, you know, this coherent state, then they oscillate periodically, perfectly periodically. Uh, if you start with a generic state or a product state, then this fidelity decays quite rapidly to zero. And, and this is the entanglement entropy. And you see, you know, uh, because this is just a matrix product state, the entanglement entropy doesn't evolve in time for, for, for these states. But if you start with a generic state, then it uh, goes up and then uh, reaches the page value, right? And so, okay, now, uh, so far, I've been talking about just the uh, S equal one half model, but you know, the free fermion system is too special, right? So you might wonder if there are uh, higher in generalization. And there are actually such examples, and you can actually cook up such model using uh, uh, starting from a U1 invariant block model, uh, which was studied by Paul Fendry and others. Uh, and okay, so here, uh, tau and S plus matrices are like this. And, and this is your Hamiltonian, and it looks uh, quite complicated, but if you put n equal to here, then this Hamiltonian boils down to the twisted XY chain. And if you put n equal three, then you get a, a particular case of a Fatif Zamolochikov model. It's a generalization of the Babujan Taktojan model. And this is really a truly interacting model. And this model has several uh, different symmetries and it has U1 symmetry and uh, it's self-dual. It, uh, it, it is manifest if you use the sigma tau representation. And what is more in important here is uh, it has a on cyber algebra symmetry. So the Hamiltonian commutes with this Q plus uh, looks like this. And then you can do the same thing uh, uh, here for S equal one model. And okay, so this is the, a Hamiltonian for S equal one. So you have X, Y like terms and uh, more complicated higher order interactions. Then uh, again, you can consider a coherent state of Q plus. So Q plus is an element of Onsaga algebra, right? And then this psi beta is a matrix product state uh, with bond dimension three. And I, I don't want to write down the matrix product state, it's too complicated, but uh, writing down, by writing down the matrix product state, you can identify uh, desired perturbations. And then these, uh, this is the half chain entanglement entropy, and you see you have uh, entanglement outliers with much lower entanglement. And if you uh, consider the fidelity for this coherent state, then, then they show this perfect dividers. All right, so how many minutes do I have? To have? Okay, sorry, sorry. Okay, then yeah, I have enough time. All right, so now uh, let me move on to the third part. So I'm gonna show you some different methods. Okay, the first one is the boundary scars and it's related to the scalar chirality. And the second example is more kind of realistic example in which we have a, a jelsinski moria interaction and Zima interaction. All right, so let me start with the first example. So, uh, okay, and, and, and this method is based on the idea of integrable boundary states. So let me explain what it is. So our starting point is again, some integrable Hamiltonian H in. And so for simplicity, let's just consider nearest neighbor interaction. 
And, and actually you can uh, systematically construct uh, conserved charges uh, using this boost operator. And this B is the sum of J times HJ. So by commuting, uh, you know, your conserved charge QN with B, then you can generate higher conserved charges. And your initial condition is that this Q2 is proportional to the uh, integrable Hamiltonian. And then uh, you can classify these conserved charges into two categories. One is even uh, parity ones and the other is uh, odd parity ones. And here uh, by parity, I mean this you know, spatial inversion about some bond or site in your 1D chain. Then, yeah, uh, let me just show you one example. So this is the simplest example of an integrable system, uh, S equal one half Heisenberg chain. And, and, and if you compute this com you know, commutator, then you get uh, Q3, which is proportional to the scalar chirality which is the sum of S dot S cross S. Right, now uh, let me introduce the notion of integrable boundary states, which was introduced in the context of quench dynamics by these people. And okay, so this is the definition. So the an integrable boundary state psi naught is a state such that it's annihilated by every parity odd conserved charge. So this is the definition. And actually, uh, I mean, the idea uh, uh, can be traced back to the, uh, you know, integrable boundary state in uh, massive uh, integrable quantum field theories studied by Sasha Zamolochikov and uh, Goshaw. But uh, here I'm, I'm focusing on the lattice version of the boundary state. All right, and then, uh, okay, so this is the uh, strategy and if this, you know, psi naught boundary state is an eigenstate of uh, some non-integrable Hamiltonian H naught, then it is an eigenstate of this sum of H naught and, you know, the other part is just the infinite sum of, you know, uh, parity of conserved charges. So this is quite uh, general and this way you can generate infinitely many different models, right? Uh, so let me just show you one simplest example. This is the, uh, uh, kind of deformed Majunda Ghosh model. So actually, you know, Indian guys, you guys know what the boundary state is. Actually, the simplest example of the boundary state is the ground state of the Majunda Ghosh model. You know, uh, his Majunda. And actually, last year I had a chance to visit SN Bose Institute in Kolkata, and uh, I realized that Majunda was the inventor and the first director of that institute. Anyway, so, okay, this is the Majunda Ghosh model and uh, here's the Hamiltonian. It's defined on this, you know, zigzag uh, ladder. And, you know, if you expand this local interaction, then you see you have a nearest neighbor and next nearest neighbor interactions. And, and one of the ground state looks like this. So just the product of these dimer states. And, and you can easily show that this dimer state is annihilated by the scalar spin chirality. Okay, so okay, so this is the uh, Hamiltonian of our SCART system. And if you just, you know, consider a superposition of Majunda Ghosh and scalar chirality, then you see that uh, this ground state is a uh, exact ground state of this model. And, and you can check that it's non-integrable by looking at the level spacing statistics. And this is the energy versus entanglement entropy plot. And you see uh, you have a, uh, typical states obeying the volume law, but at the bottom you have some outliers, and uh, this is the dimer state with zero energy. So this way, yeah, you know, you can establish that this model is a squared model. All right. So okay, let me finally talk about uh, more something more realistic. So this is the workshop of the uh, sorry agenda of the workshop. You can find at the web page, and you know. Uh, it is emphasized that, you know, the interplay between the theory and experiment is really important, right? But so far, I've been just talking about super artificial models and uh, maybe most of you are getting bored of these models, right? So, but anyway, so finally, uh, let me talk a little bit about something more realistic. 
And actually, as I said, I have some collaboration with uh, uh, experimentalists. It's not really an experiment, but uh, uh, we have proposed some way to realize a scarred model using Friedberg excited states. Okay, so this is the experimental setup, and you have a, a bunch of Friedberg atoms in this uh, tilted chain. And uh, the angle between this you know, chain and the horizontal axis is theta. And, and uh, you know, at this atom, you have you know, a bunch of states, but uh, here I, I am taking these two states, N1, S1 half, and N2, S1 half. And uh, I identify these states uh, with up and down states. And then uh, we apply uh, laser one and laser two in, from, you know, in different directions, and they have different wave number and the uh, Rabi frequencies. And then you know you can do the standard stuff like uh, you know rotating wave approximations and so on. Then you can drive the effective spin model for this uh, experimental system. And the effective Hamiltonian turns out to be S equal one half XXZ chain in a rotating magnetic field. And you also have a, a longitudinal field, static field. But uh, of course, you know working in a, with a rotating magnetic field is a bit complicated. So let's uh, make it uniform by using some unitary transformation. And, and you can actually go to the spin rotating frame in which this rotating magnetic field becomes just a uniform uh, field. And this is the effective Hamiltonian in the new basis. And the first term is the, you know, ZZ and XX interaction. And this is YY interaction. You have some magnetic field terms. And interestingly, if you go to the new basis, then uh, you have a jelosinski moria interaction, even in, though you don't have a spin orbit interaction this is in this system. And because we have a high tunability in our system, you can uh, actually tune the parameters. And for instance, if you take Q to be pi half, then you can uh, Q the first term, right? And similarly by you know, tuning the other parameters, you can uh, make them vanish. Then uh, what you're left with is the jelosinski moria interaction and the magnetic field in Z direction. And this is what uh, some people call the DH model. And, and they studied uh, in some interesting properties. And, and, and actually what is interesting is that in this system, you have a, a quantum many body scars. And okay, this is the Hamiltonian of the DH model. And, and here, let's consider this Q dagger raising operator. And it's very similar to what was discussed in this paper. But uh, anyway, so you can check that uh, this Hamiltonian and Q dagger satisfy this restricted spectrum generating algebra, these algebraic relations. Actually, uh, a more general theory was discussed in uh, Maud Garia's paper. Anyway, so once you establish these algebraic relations, then it is, it is easy to see that uh, this SN ket, this is an exact eigenstate of the Hamiltonian with this eigen energy. And then you can do the same thing like, uh, you know, level statistics and, uh, and so on. And then this is the uh, entanglement entropy versus energy pro. And you see most of the states go into this, you know, volume low curve, but uh, you have uh, some, you know, this outlier and it's actually uh, this SN state. All right. So, yeah, I think I'm, yeah, running out of my time. So let me stop here. So thank you very much for your attention. Questions? Um, so, um... In integrable systems, you often have a quasi-particle-like description of the states. Um, so do you have any intuition as to the quasi, is there a quasi-particle picture for the scar states you've been constructing? Is there a way of thinking about it in that language? Oh, good question. Uh, yeah, concerning the boundary state, there is a definite quasi-particle picture. Actually, uh, yeah. So. Yeah, maybe I'm, yeah, let me remember. Uh, so, yeah, 
maybe I'm wrong. So actually, what is interesting is you can compute the overlap between this psi naught and uh, uh, some crazy particle state. You know, uh, in the beta and that you have rapidities, right? Lambdas, one lambda, two, and so on. And actually, what is interesting is uh, you can compute the sign in overlap between this psi naught and some particular beta state with, you know, this, uh, they have these rapidities, lambda one minus lambda one, lambda two minus lambda two, and so on. And this, you know, this state looks a lot like the uh, quasar particle picture in the calabrese cardi, right? Like they, they have opposite, opposite yeah, yeah. velocities. But uh, yeah, so, but this, yeah, but this means that this guy has uh, some overlap with this crazy particle state, but uh, I'm not really sure. Uh, I mean, this guy only contains these states or it also contains the other kind of beta states. And yeah, and concerning the Onsaga algebra, yeah, it definitely has a crazy particle picture, right? Because, you know, in this case, yeah, in the simplest case, the scars are generated by this bimagnon operator, but, you know, each bimagnon is just a bound state of magnons. Actually, in the beta and Zas context, it's called the singular states because you know you cannot really construct these states using B, your B operators. You need to take some weird uh, limit. Some limiting procedure is necessary. Is there any intuitive connection between the sort of old school uh, SCARS states of single, uh, single particle uh, quantum chaos and these many body Scarred states. I mean, in, in the stadia, there are these sort of periodic, uh, special periodic orbits. Is there any connection? Uh huh. So, yeah, the honest answer is I, I, I don't have any idea, but because, you know, today I'm, gonna, you know, I'm entirely focusing lattice models, but in the old literature, people studied continuous system, right? Uh, yeah, actually, recently some people studied scars in continuous system. Like, uh, you know, if you just consider a chiral boson with linear dispersion, just like the previous talk, then it's just an integrable system, right? But uh, if you consider non chiral, you know, chiral but uh, non linear dispersion, uh, I mean, non, you know, fermion with non linear dispersion, and if you consider some particular interaction, then you can construct some. Uh, scarred models and but the reason is because you know if you go to momentum space then it's still kind of a lattice model right that's why you can construct some um you know fine-tuned models uh, but anyway so yeah yeah I, I have to say so some people have been trying to construct some uh, many body scars in uh, continuous systems so maybe uh, in such a case, you might be able to connect a single single body scar and uh, many body scars, but uh, I'm not very sure. Any other questions? Okay, if not, then let's break for lunch and we're back here at 2.30.